Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video and today I will show you guys 15 iPhone tricks that you probably didn't even know existed. These are hidden features and tricks that you will find on your iPhone that are very, very useful and probably you didn't even know that you can do such stuff on your iPhone. Now, before we get into all these tips and tricks, make sure you smash the like button of this video. That's a trick to help this video and this channel do a lot better. So make sure you don't leave the video without smashing the like button. Starting things off with screen sharing, a new feature added to iOS 15.1, which is of course very, very useful for a lot of people. But did you know that it actually works just like picture in picture? So if I swipe out of the FaceTime app, I will have the screen here, just like I do with picture in picture videos. I can move it around anywhere I want. Did you know that you can also resize it, simply double tap on it and you can make the screen smaller or bigger. Or of course you can pinch in and out to resize the screen. You can even hide it. So let's say you need the screen, the full screen here. You can just swipe it like that and hide it and move it around anywhere you want. So it works exactly like picture in picture does on iOS. This is a new screen sharing feature of iOS 15.1. A cool new thing that you can do on your iPhone is AirPlay to your Mac. Finally, you can simply tap to AirPlay to your Mac from your iPhone. You can do that with music apps, with videos, YouTube videos, anything you want. You can now just AirPlay them to your Mac. So if we go to the music app right here, all I got to do is just tap the AirPlay button. And right there, I have my MacBook Pro. I can simply tap here and just send the song AirPlay to my Mac. It's easy as that. You can do that now with the new macOS Monterey feature that Apple has added. So AirPlay anything simply by tapping the AirPlay button directly to your Mac. With iOS 15, Apple has added a new feature called background sounds. I see a lot of people love this feature, but it's actually quite hard to turn it on. You will have to go to your settings, go under accessibility right here, and then go to audio and right here will find background sounds You turn them on from there. Or the other way is to enable it on the control center. So you go to the control center settings and add hearing, then go to your control center, through the touch there and you can turn background sounds on from here. But did you know that there is a very quick way to do that? Just go to your settings, go under accessibility and right here, go to touch, scroll all the way down to back tap and go to double tap or triple tap. And now you will have a new option here for background sounds. So you can now use double tap or triple tap on the back of your iPhone to turn on or off background sounds. With iOS 15, Apple has added the ability to simply translate from anywhere on your device. But did you know that you can also translate PDF documents? So if you have a PDF document opened on your device, all you gotta do is just select any word that you actually wanna translate and just tap the translate button right there. You can pick, of course, here the languages to which you want to translate and you can simply translate directly from any PDF file that you have opened on your device without having to use any app or extract anything from the PDF directly on the PDF, select any text and simply translate from there. Most of you guys have probably used guided access on your device. So when you turn on guided access, you do it by triple pressing the side button of your device. You do that and it is enabled. But did you know that you can disable it with Face ID? So if you enable the Face ID protection for guided access, there is a trick in order to unlock basically turn off guided access with Face ID. So if I have it turned on right now, if I th three tap right there, press three times, you can see it shows the passcode. It doesn't actually show Face ID. Now the trick here is to press twice not three times, just twice on the side button. And now you will be able to actually unlock it using your face ID. You can see right there, it doesn't actually unlock because I'm not facing my phone right now. So it doesn't see my face, but all you have to do is just press twice here to actually unlock it with face ID and press three times if you want to do it with a passcode. Now to enable face ID for guided access, what you got to do is go to settings, go under accessibility, go to guided access here, go to passcode settings and make sure you have face ID turned on. Has this ever happened to you? You give your iPhone to someone to take a look at a picture, but they just slide like left or right and take a look at other pictures that you don't want them to. 
The quick way to fix this is enable guided access. Now you can see if I triple tap right there, it is enabled. And now I cannot swipe anywhere on the screen. Now the way to do this, just enable guided access and then go ahead and try to disable it. Enter the passcode to disable guided access and then don't tap end or zoom, tap options. And make sure you have right there, you have turned off touch. This means that the touch screen of your device will be disabled. That way, once you have done that, you tap resume right there, guided access will start again and the screen now has completely been disabled. A really useful way to use your iPhone is to use it as a scanner for your Mac. So if you have a MacBook and you have an iPhone, when you go to apps like let's say Notes for example, and you're trying to add like a photo or scan a document or add a sketch, all you gotta do is just keep your iPhone closed to your Mac and tap on scan document. You can see this will pop up on your device. You can tap right here to scan documents and directly save them to your Mac. This is a very, very easy way to do that. And of course, very, very useful at the same time. You will be able to actually add documents, maybe even sketch something here on your iPhone, click the dump button, and they will directly be saved to your Mac to a note or any other document that you're working on. So use your iPhone as a scan document scanner directly to your Mac. You can turn any TikTok video into a live wallpaper for your iPhone. Now the way to do this, simply go to any video you want on TikTok and tap the three dots right there. Once you're here, tap on live photo. This will save this as a live photo on your device. Now once this has been saved, just head on to the photos app. And now that it has been saved, all you gotta do is just tap the share button and right there it uses a wallpaper and now you can have a full TikTok video set as a wallpaper on the lock screen of your device. Now this won't be any like two or three seconds video. This will be the complete video right there on the lock screen of your device. So you will basically be able to set a full length of the video as a wallpaper on your iPhone, which is actually really, really cool. A really cool thing on your iOS device are automations. Now there is a trick that will let you protect any app you want. So let's say you have an app or maybe even more that you don't want anyone to open and use that app. You can use a really clever trick on the shortcuts app. So go to shortcuts right here and go under automation. Tap on create personal automation and select app from here. Choose the app that let's say you want to protect or you don't want anyone to actually use it. Click the dump button, click the next button right there and then tap on add action and search for go to home screen. So here we have go to home screen, click the next button, disable this and click done. And now you can see what happens. Let's say someone grabs your iPhone, they want to use that app that you don't want them to. They open it, it automatically goes back to the home screen. So this will happen anytime this app is open. Your device goes automatically back to the home screen and it just looks like the app is crashing, it's not working, but it's actually the automation that is doing that. Another useful iPhone automation will let you send scheduled messages. So tap the plus button right there, create personal automation, choose time of the day right here, choose the time when you want to send the message, click the next button and go ahead and tap on add action and search for send message. Right there you will have send message, you type the message right here and then of course choose the contact here to which one to send this message. You can choose multiple contacts as well. And once you have done that, tap the done button, tap next, make sure you have disabled this button right here, click done, and now you're good to go. At that certain time of the day, the message will be sent automatically. The iMessage app on iOS is pretty powerful. You can track any flight you want from the iMessage app. So let's say you have a flight number, all you gotta do is just message it to yourself maybe or to any of your friends and then just tap on that number and tap preview flight and right there you will have a preview of that flight. All the details you need to know about that flight will be displayed right here on the iMessage app. This is a really cool trick and a very, very easy way to actually track any flight you want to. And you can see right here what we have these like invisible messages that you can send to anyone you want. Now the way to send them, just go ahead, tap the message you want to send and then from here tap and hold that, that button right there, the blue button and tap right here on invisible link 
and just go ahead and tap right there to send it. Now you can see how it displays. Now once someone receives this message, all they gotta do is just like swipe like that on the message and of course it will actually display the message. The picture in picture feature of iOS is a pretty cool one and of course very useful at the same time, but it's actually very, very smart as well. So let's say I'm on the home screen here, I'm watching a video and I wanna go ahead and send a message. When I just tap right here, you can see it's just on the place where the keyboard should be. And of course, you don't have to actually move it around. All you gotta do is just tap right there to type a message. And as you can see, it will automatically push up the video. So it just moves back to the place it was once you have removed the keyboard from the screen of your device. It's actually really, really smart and you don't need to do anything manually. Did you know that you can increase the volume of your device on iOS? And the way to do that is basically in two ways. So first of all, generally on your iPhone, you can do that from the EQ option by simply going to the music app right here, go to EQ and just go ahead and choose a late night right there. That will increase the volume of your device and of course have a slightly louder volume on the speakers of your iPhone. Now, if there is another way to do that, if you use headphones, now for headphones, you gotta go to the settings here under accessibility. And then from here, what you gotta do is go under audio and visuals, your headphone accommodations, make sure you have this turned on. And right here, just swipe to strong. And now you have increased the volume of your device. Of course, this one, I've seen this on a ton of videos, but this one will work only on headphones, not on the iPhone speakers. And if you use Spotify, which of course a lot of people do, you can increase the volume of your iPhone by going to Spotify, go to settings, and then go under playback and right here you have volume level. Just make sure you go ahead and choose loud and you will have more volume out of your device. And last but not least is a live pictures trick. So I have shot here like four or five different live photos. And if I tap and hold the first one, you can see it continues to the next one. So it will play them just like a video. So when they sh when you shoot them one after another, that's what happens. You can also go ahead and select these live pictures and tap the share button and then actually go ahead and save these as a video. Now the whole four of them will be saved as one video. And that is actually pretty, pretty cool you can turn a bunch of live photos into a single video. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned some new iPhone tricks today. So thank you guys for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more and leave a like on the video. And I'll see you on the next one.